La ville n'est pas bon. Hein. Say Zerbo, he used to kneel in the first row for the prayers at the mosque, and he faithfully participated in the fasts, celebrations, and rituals of the Muslim religion. I pray outside in the street so everyone can see that I am a Muslim. Very sincere, honest, and convinced that I have the truth. That's how I've been taught. He had carefully read the Quran and knew it well. His standing as a Muslim man was sure, at least as sure as he thought it could be. But on the horizon was a test, a severe test which would shake Say Zerbo's world and press to the limit the authenticity of his religion. It was about 2 p.m. and I was coming back from my office. I was still the president at the time. I was very tired, so I went straight to bed to take a nap. At that moment, I had a dream. I was in coveralls, very dirty between four angels. They were in very white clothes. I noticed that their feet weren't touching the soil. I understood later that the earth is spoiled, and that is why their feet were touching the soil. One of the four angels lifted his hand and pointed to a tall mountain, all white. I started climbing to the top of the mountain. I turned to the east and then to the west. And I woke up. What's that mean? At six o'clock, the palace was occupied by militaries. At midnight, somebody knocked at my door and yelled, Colonel, come out. We will kill you right now. He said that twice. For the third time, I stood up and walked to the door. My first wife yelled at me, come back and sit here. If they want to kill you, they have to break the door down. Get back and sit here. Ce jour-là, on est venu l'arrêter dans un char. That day, they came in a tank to arrest him. The way they came, I think God's grace was already upon him. Otherwise, he could have had a heart attack. But again, they arrested him in a tank. So as a child, it shocked me. I was eight years old. A few days after they arrested my dad, they came home to collect everything that he owned. He had a little box where he kept coins. From that box, he would give me pocket money for school. They took even that away from us. The revolutionary people, they shouted all the time about the death of those they said were against them. When I was arrested, without any court decision, they confiscated everything I had. Even my retirement plan was in hold. And here I was, alone, with nothing to take care of my family. And you know how large my family is. At that time, under the revolutionary government, many people were killed. So every single day was a worry. Is my dad still alive? I was afraid to hear 
Parfois même tu te disais. Un bad report about ah, him. Est-ce qu'on ne l'a pas déjà tué même? Et tous les jours et que nous avons vécu au moment de la révolution, c'était comme si nous avions été en prison avec lui. It was like we were in prison with him because the kids at school were reminding us of that. When someone is not happy with you, they will shout, 15 years in prison. It was a pain to be reminded all the time that your dad is not with you. In the neighborhood, the parents were trying to contain their children, but at school it was hard even with the instructor. I remember one day in class, the instructor was trying to have my cousin and I repeat the slogan that they shouted every day, to death, to death, the enemy of the country to death, and we refused. Then he seriously beat us. This is something that I can't forget. The threat of a violent death never abates, even though the length of Colonel Zerbo's imprisonment stretches on and on. It's a time of upheaval, of great spiritual turmoil. Where Zerbo wonders is the strength to endure, the wisdom to understand that should come from one's religion. No, the test that he undergoes breaks his heart and his previous religious beliefs. The basic questions of life and death, of love and faith, questions about God and how to find him, these now arise in Say Zerbo's soul with a fervency and immediacy he has never known. And then, into this storm of confusion and doubt and worry for his family, comes a most unusual dream. The one thing that was bothering me the most was to find out about the meaning of the dream. Those angels, what did that mean? The mountain. As a Muslim, I started looking in the Quran. Yes, the Quran talks about angels, but there was nothing close to what I saw in my dreams. I looked in the dream explanation book, but nothing that satisfied. Then I remember one of my friends, Abrango Lanque, who used to talk about a miracle in the Bible. Ibrango had talked to Say about the revelations of God from the Bible. Now, Zerbo had once had a Bible. It was a gift from a Catholic archbishop when he was still the president of Upper Volta. Zerbo had received the gift politely, telling him that he would read it whenever he had time. Well, he had some time now. He wasn't sure exactly how much time, but Zerbo knew he had to begin to investigate Christianity to find out whether or not it was true, whether or not it was trustworthy, to find out if Jesus Christ really was the Son of God who takes away the sin of the world. Reading the Bible, I found some interesting verses where God says, I am the rock. And in the Psalms, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. The mountain is a rock. The Lord is a rock. At that moment, I closed my Bible, got on my knees to thank God. I was full of joy jumping in the prison and yelling, I found it, I found it. So Jesus is the rock and he is